There we go. I think that's better. Okay. All right, so now that we have our pattern on, we're gonna go ahead and start washing in some color. And I use Josonia Artist Colors. They're an awesome brand. And they have this wonderful pigment in their paint. It's, the paint is a pure paint. So we're gonna start out with Brown Earth, and that's this color. Let's see here. And you only need a tiny little drop on your palette. You don't need very much. So I'm gonna put some on mine, just a little drop. <laughs> and I'm gonna pass it to the girls, there you go. We'll start out with Brown Earth. Okay, I'm a little confused because <laughs> the project is Okay, I'm looking at my screen and the project is flipped. There must be an exclamation for that. So, I'm not sure how to fix it. Do you know, Aubrey? Okay, well, what you can know is this, what, the way it looks on Facebook is it's flipped. So, um, the bird is facing to the left, that's the way you can see it, but the way I'm actually doing it, it's facing the right, so. Anyway, we'll just make it happen, right? It, I guess it doesn't really matter which way the bird is facing. Okay, so I'm gonna use some clean water. So you wanna grab some clean water with your brush, and I'm pulling away some paint from my puddle, okay? And we're gonna work on the darkest brown on the bird. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I just have a little tester sheet and I want the girls to do this too. You should have a round brush, it looks like this. Yes, that's it, okay. So we're gonna work on the darker areas and that's you know these areas here, okay. So I'm pulling it away, I'm gonna test on my tester sheet the color that I have there, and that looks good. I think that matches, you know, the um, photo there that I have, the little step photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, clean my brush out so I have clean water, and I'm just gonna wet those areas with some clean water. Be careful to stay in the lines. You don't wanna go out into the rest of the bird. So we're just working on these dark brown areas. It goes up and around the eye and then on the wing there. And now I'm gonna grab my paint. It's better to start out light. You can always make it darker later, right? So this is a little light. I'm gonna add a little more pigment and bring it in a little darker but I was really glad that I started out light first. So this is the biggest rule of thumb, I guess, is always test your color before you go onto the watercolor paper because this is not something you can just like take off and remove, right? You wanna have it the way it should be the first time. Okay, so I know Isabel's a little nervous. You can do this, Isabel. You got it. You got this. Okay. And I'm just filling in these areas. We're working on these areas right here, Isabel. Okay. okay. And I'm going to work up around the head here. There's a little bit of a brown stripe there. And then it goes brown around the eye here. And I'm leaving the eye open so there shouldn't be any color in the eye area. There we go. Okay. Oops, I went out the line a little bit there. I'm gonna use my paper towel. Wet my paper towel a little bit with some clean water and see if I can't pick that up. There we go. So now I'd like to add a little more pigment to this area of the tail. So I'm gonna go back and grab a little more paint. I'm gonna grab your wall. <laughs> there we go. How you doing, Aubrey? Pretty good. 
Awesome. I see why you would want to do the clean water over it before you go over it with the Right. Yeah, you want to have nice clean color. water. Let's see how I'm adding a little more color to the tail. And since it's still wet, it's just kind of bleeding into the rest of the bird. But that looks good to me. I think I'm going to stop there. You can do the same, Isabel. You can go back into the tail and add a little more color. So, I'm going to put your water here so I can see it. There we go. All right. Say again? Yeah. Okay. And like I said before, um, this bird that I'm doing is flipped on my monitor, so I'm sorry about that, but you know, my bird is actually facing the right. So you can do it either way. But for some reason, we haven't figured out why Facebook does that. They flip the image. It's probably my camera or my phone. All right, wonderful. You guys are doing great. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Colony Blue. So we just want to tiny touch. See, I didn't even hardly use any of my um, brown. So you really don't need anything. Just a tiny little touch of Colony Blue. I love this color. And I'm going to wet my brush with clean water. So clean out your brush so it's nice and clean. And we'll work on the ocean part. Some might think this is a sky. I don't know. I just designed it this way. It's kind of a different perspective, right? But this is actually supposed to be the ocean. So that's up and over above the bird. I'm just wetting down the area to get ready for my colony blue color. Okay. Remember to use clean water. Grab a little bit of paint from your puddle and I'm going to test it on my tester sheet here and I think that looks pretty good so okay I want a nice watery color so I can just put it across and I won't have any dry spots Again, I'm just using a round brush. You can use a flat brush for this if you want to. The round is nice though to get into the smaller areas. Do you see any questions? No questions? Hi Kathy! <laughs> Hi Tawny! All right. Okay, so I went in light, I started light, but I'm gonna add a little more pigment because um, I just want a little darker. So I'm gonna play around and add a little more color, especially up in the corners. It's still wet, so I can dab in a little bit of color. Again, this is Joe Sonia Artist Colors. They're an opaque gouache. It's actually an acrylic gouache, if you want to say it correctly. It's not a watercolor gouache. It's a, an acrylic gouache that um, has properties similar to watercolor. Okay. All right, now while it's still wet, and I want it nice and wet, this part, we're going to grab some salt, and this is just regular table salt, and I'm going to do some fun things with it. Just sprinkle a little bit of salt. You need to make sure that it's wet, okay? Because see how it just grabs hold of the pigment? It, it can only do that if it's nice and wet in that area. So take your table spot, salt and sprinkle a little bit in the blue area. It needs, remember, cool. it needs to be needs to be wet. Go ahead and add more water. More water to your blue, Isabel. And then you can add even more pigment. Go ahead and get some up into the corners of your piece. 
Dale, could you flip it around and show Aubrey's piece? Well, maybe not. <laughs> It'd be great just to flip it around and show what Aubrey's doing. You can see how our pieces have their own unique personality. Oh, okay. We'll just pull it over here. That's easier. So here's our spot. <laughs> this is Aubrey's. Isn't that beautiful? So hers is coming along. And Isabel's still working on her ocean. Add a little more pigment and more water, Isabel, and you'll be good. Okay, so you can see that the uh, salt is starting to separate the color and add some spottage to the background. It's kind of fun, huh? How are you guys all doing in Facebook land? <laughs> are you painting along with me? Let me know how it's going. Okay, while that's drying, we're going to work, make sure and get the salt out of the rest of the piece here. Oops. Okay, we're going to go ahead and work on the beak and the legs. And we're going to use a different brown. We're going to use burnt umber for this part. There you go, Isabel. Okay, now go ahead and add your salt. Just a little sprinkles. Have fun with that. Okay, again, just a little dab of burnt umber. And you're going to water down your burnt umber a tad too. This can be a little darker for this one. And actually I think I'm going to use a, a different brush. I'm going to go smaller. So you can use a, like a small liner or a small round for this. I'm going to put this over there. And you want to water it down still so it has kind of that watercolor look. But you're going to color in the legs. So Isabel needs the. Oh, you got it? Okay. Do you got a small brush? Okay, perfect. All right, now working on the legs. There we go. Kathy's asking if we can zoom in a little bit. Zoom in more? Okay. Just need to pull it down probably. Yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah, just like. And I can also horizontal flip it for you too. Yeah. You want to do? Oh, just, just shorten this right there. Yeah, closer. get it in closer. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, and then it stops right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so now over to the beak. This is the same burnt umber color. With the beak, you want to be careful that you don't enlarge the beak. It's real easy to make it larger than it should be. And, um, It'll start looking kind of funny if you do that. So try to keep it small. Stay within the lines. There we go. So I'm ready to rinse out my brush. I'm going to go in with a flat brush for the next part. Can everyone see now? Is it better? Oh, Kathy says much better. Thank you. Hi, Teresa. So we're still letting the ocean area dry while we're coloring in our beak and our legs. There you go. Very nice, Isabel. Be careful with that beak and just make sure and stay within the lines. Try not to enlarge it. <laughs> this is so fun. I love painting with you. Okay. All right. Let me show your pieces. Is that okay, Isabel? Can I show what you've done? 
Okay, this is Isabel's. She's been working. She's got her um, ocean going on with the salt. And she's got her dark color on, so the, we're getting ready for the next color. Okay. Right, you can rinse out your brush, Isabel, and then grab a flat. So you have this small flat right here. The next color we're going to use is Skin Tone Base. So. And again, just a tiny little chocolate chip size on your palette. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to water that down too. Because like I said, it's best to start out light and go in dark. You have more freedom that way. So I'm watering down my skin tone base. This is the color here. All right, I'm gonna cover the rest of the area behind the bird, which is the sand. And I'm just using a flat. And I could go in with water first, but because this is a light color and I think we're doing okay. So I'm just gonna do one section at a time. Be careful that your beak is dry. Mine's already dry, so you don't want to Bring in more color around the beak if it's not dry yet. So, because it will just bleed right into the sand. All right, so I'm getting in there. And this is one section I've done, okay? I'm going in light. I can always add dark texture to the rest of the piece as I go along. Okay, I have a little bit, there's some wet spots on my leg, so I'm gonna avoid that area right now, I'm gonna work over in this area. So you girls can go ahead and start with that color. It's this right here. It's called Skin Tone Base. And I'm gonna start up here, work. And stay away from that leg until it dries. It, it'll be drying while I'm working. There. Well, it took me a while to take down my Christmas decorations. For some reason, well, I really wasn't home much <laughs> during December, so when it, I did finally get them up, I didn't want to take them down. And they reminded me of my family. So I had my family here for Christmas, and it was kind of nice to look at my Christmas decorations for a while. So finally, I took them down in January and said, okay, I'm ready to move on into the year. I have a little bit of Valentine's going on in my house, but I don't think I have enough. <laughs> I like lots of decorations for the holidays. All right, we can move up and go right up to the leg. There. Okay, now I'm going to work in between the legs. Just be careful not to get the legs at all. There we go. Okay, so I have it fairly light. Ooh, I love how your salt is turning out. Look at Aubrey's salt. That's so cool. That looks really awesome. Mine's kind of, I've got the overall effect. <laughs> okay. So, um, Isabel's been getting her house ready to sell. How's it been going, Isabel? Good. Good? There's a lot to do when you sell the house, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now I'm adding more of the same color. And I'm just going to add it here and there while my paint is still wet. I'm just creating a variation there. And it might be kind of fun to add a little bit up into the blue of the ocean. Just bleed it in there a little bit. I'm just adding water like so. So touching here and there. 
Got a little more extra in the edges. Okay, I'm done with my sand. Looking good, girls. Love it. Aubrey's been working on all her mail ordering for how long have you been working for us? For a few months now? And she's been, so if you get a package, Aubrey's the one that puts it all together and <laughs> writes a little message to you. She's been wonderful. It's freed me up a lot to be able to do some more painting and designing and stuff like this. I don't know if I'd have time to do stuff like this. And I'd really like to do more of these type of videos with you so I can connect with, the, with everyone out there. Oh, let me show your salt. Look at Isabel's. Oh my word. I think it's awesome. Look at that. that how that salt reacted right there. That looks really great. Good job, Isabel. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so if your area up here is dry, you can start wiping away that salt. I'm just going to take my paper towel and just kind of move the salt off. That was fun. I loved doing that salt area. That was fun. Okay. I'm going to just pat this dry so we can move on. Before, while we're letting this dry, I'll go ahead and talk to you about colored pencils a little bit. And um, we can just go ahead and let that dry and let you guys all catch up if you need to. So we're going to be working with colored pencils next. And we can just take our paint and set it aside. I like to move it away a little bit so it's not in around my elbows. <laughs> And then pull my color pencils in and over next to me. We have four color pencils that we need. We are using black, sienna brown, Mediterranean blue, and dark brown. And these are all these pencils were short little stubs, so I just taped them together so I have longer pencils. You also need, you can also use an extender. So this is how you do the extenders. You just go ahead and put your pencil in. It needs to be loose. And then you just tighten it up with this um, little grip here. Hold it and then twist. And you have a nice extender for your pencil. That's handy. All right. So we got our brushes out of the way. We need our handy... Um, sharpeners so have a nice sharpener nearby and it's also good to have a little dusting brush nearby too I have these flat dusting brushes that I saw on the website um, so you want to make sure this is soft too you want a nice soft this is like I think goat hair why would it need to be soft well I like to have it soft because sometimes it can actually um, fit too hard well if you use a lot of pressure and if it's not soft enough you can actually smear your pencil or your pencil can kind of go into your brush so um, if you have a brush that's not soft you just go ahead and make sure and use a light touch when you're sweeping away your pencil crumbs all right so the first color we're going to use is let me get my <laughs> cheat sheet out here we're going to use sienna brown no dark brown dark brown you want to make sure your pencil's nice and sharp. Mm -hmm. um, make sure it's nice and sharp. Uh, I have it right here. Okay. I'll show. It. I'll give it to you. I'll share with you, Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And so I'm using the short. There's like a long one and a short one, and I'm using the short one. There you go. So I make sure it's nice and sharp before we get started. Um, I also have little battery-operated sharpeners that I use, yeah, and these are handy. Um, those are nice because they have the shaving is actually um, it's not a shit you know like a regular shaving. These are little crumbs that come out. Um, I like this too. It's really great, especially for starting a pencil because it can be tricky if you have a pencil that um, 
if you use any pressure on moving your pencil in the sharpener, it can break real easy because the lead is nice and soft, so you can get lots of pigment out of your pencil. So you want to be careful when you're, pencil, when you're sharpening, just very lightly, and keep it um, either parallel, real close with the, um, with the pencil sharpener. Just be careful not to go either way like this because you could break your lead. So um, if you have a problem with lead breakage, some, there are some little remedies that you can use. You can um, use some super glue. If you ever have a nice lead and it just pops out, you can super glue it back into your pencil and then keep sharpening. The other thing you can do is sometimes inside the pencil might um, break. So the wax core might break on the inside and you can use like a, a warm place in your house to melt, weld those spots together. Some people will put their pencils in their oven at a low temperature with a cup of water and that will help um, meld those that lead back together. Or you could put it in a sunny window or in a hot car. That always helps too. So and in the meantime, you guys got a sharp pencil? You all ready? Okay, we're going to go ahead and line around the whole um, bird. I'm just touching it. It's a little, mine's a little cold still. That means it's not completely dry. Maybe I can keep talking. Let's keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I told you a little bit about pencils. These are Prismacolor wax based pencils. And, and um, I use different types of sharpeners. I have to be careful with the sharpening. I always like to have a nice sharp pencil. Some Teachers like to have a dull pencil. It just depends on how they do their artwork. I like the sharp ones because I like to work on texture and that's, I get lots of good detail. I'm a detail artist. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I am a detail <laughs> artist. So, um, okay, well, I think mine's ready. How about you? Yep. Okay, you ready, Isabel? Mm -hmm. Okay, get your brown pencil and go ahead and line around the body. And you can go around the tail feathers, kind of pull it in like that when you go around the tail feather. And so it separates the feathers. And then I'm going around the brown areas. Whoops. And bringing the brown. I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm just going to go like about right there. And I'll stop about right there. And then I'm moving up around the head and to the beak. So I'll connect that line right there. Yeah. All right, now I'll work around the head. So under the beak and then down on the chest. And I'm bringing it back down to the leg and then moving across the bottom and to the bum. There we go. <laughs> All right. You guys got that going on? Okay, good job. Very nice. Okay. Okay, did you make sure and separate your tail feathers? Did you separate your tail feathers? Okay, yeah, how are you my, doing? My color oh. pencil lead broke, so. Oh, okay. Sharpening. Sharpening again. If you need some uh, super glue, I have some. All right. Now um, we get to do the brown spots. So if you take your line drawing back up to where you're, you're sitting, you have your line drawing on the tray, it's the tracing. Okay, so you can take your line drawing and just put that near you and use that as reference. And you're gonna add all those little spots to your bird. So there you go. You can put this right here, Isabel. Mm -hmm. Okay, use your same dark brown pencil and we're gonna add all the little spots. And these are random little and they're different sizes. So 
don't be afraid to just add some various spots here and there all over. Okay, you're going to want some small ones and some large ones. And you know what? I think I'm going to put a little heart on mine. I like hearts, so I'm going to put a heart there. Some long, there we go. Little ones, small ones, and then big ones. Different sizes, and they're very random. You can look at your tracing or your guide that I gave you in your um, in your pattern and see where to put the spots. The rule of thumb is to have some dark ones, big dark ones and small ones randomly mixed amongst each other. Okay? And they're all different sizes. And then I'm going to pull up some kind of to the top of the head, but I'm not going all the way to the top of the head. Just a few there. Okay? Make sure some of your spots are a little rounder and some are a little bit longer and oblong. Okay. Just have fun with this. This is where you can use your imagination and have fun with this. And see how I'm bringing some of the spots right to the edge of the brown area? You don't need to go down into the tail feathers. We're doing a lot of shading there, so that's you don't really need to do that. Just make sure you have some smaller spots here and there too. And then I want you to add a few right here on the chest. And these are small. Do you see them? Isabel? Mm -hmm. Okay, just a few right here on the chest. All right. Okay, keep working at it. Get all those spots on there. Okay, how's it going, Isabel? You got the ones on your chest. That looks really good. I like it. Okay, Aubrey's still working on it. She's about three quarters of the way done. <laughs> Bobby says, love the personalized packages, stickers, and kind words. We love stickers. <laughs> We collect stickers at our house, and we like to put them all over your packages. So, um, and we like to do different types of stickers too. So, depending on the holidays. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? Lynn Andrews is on. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're coming along here. It's looking good. Keep going, Isabel. <laughs> Add some smaller spots too. Loving it. Okay, you could probably go a little, I'm showing Aubrey's here. She could probably bring a few more spots down here and then add some smaller ones. You've got a lot of, you know, medium and large, but add some real small ones in here and there. Okay, okay I'm loving it. You know, January here in Washington State is usually pretty dark and gloomy. And um, we had a beautiful day, though, today. So, can't complain. Once in a while, we get those really nice days, and it makes us so happy. But January, February, March, kind of dark and gloomy. <laughs> and we try to fill our time with things that make us happy so that we um, don't get depressed. Because... It can be dark. You know, I also know that when I 
don't get enough vitamin D, my fingers and my toes start aching more than normal. And so I have been popping that vitamin D lately. And it's helping a lot. It just takes it right away. How's that look? That looks great. Okay, Aubrey put in some smaller dots and she continued them down into the tail feathers. Looks awesome. You want to show yours? Here's Isabelle's. Very nice, Isabelle. You could probably add a few more right in here, hun. Right down in this area. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good job. Okay. Do you like to paint? You know, I'm talking to everyone out there. Do you like to paint with your grandchildren or your own children? Um, this is a fun little project to do with them. You know, we like these quickies so that uh, we can get done quick and yet we can have fun together. So I know my time with my grandchildren is pretty limited. They live far away. So well, sometimes we actually do things over, uh, over um, FaceTime. <laughs> we'll do like some drawing together while we're on FaceTime. So any way I can connect with my grandchildren, I'm happy camper. All right, the next thing we need is our Sienna Brown pencil. Make sure that's nice and sharp. So grab your sharpeners. You can go ahead and use that one. I'll show you how I... You just want to make sure when you go down into your sharpener that you don't pull it one way or the other. Go straight down. So I'm going to pull it here so it's not so loud. Probably annoying on the video. All right, so I got a nice sharp pencil. We're gonna do some shading right now, and we're gonna make it look like a float. I don't know if you're familiar with what a float looks, but in the decorative painting world that I work, do a lot of work with, we use a brush to create our shading, and we call it floating. So we're gonna do that, though, with a pencil. This is kind of fun and magical, and it's really great for those that don't have very much experience with the brush. Gives them a feeling for how shading should look. And I would love it if you've never used a brush to move on and work with your brush later on and learn how to do your own floating with a brush. But for now, we're working with a pencil. So what I'll do is I'll work in terms of three different values. I'll use my dark, medium, and light value. So I wanna show this to you before you guys get started. You can just watch. I'm using just a little back and forth motion for my dark value. See how I got my dark value in there on little tails? That's my dark value. Now I'm gonna move into a motion and I'm overlapping, I'm overlapping the circles. A lot. <laughs> you want to make sure and overlap them real well. Okay, so that's my medium value. Now I need a light value, so even lighter pressure as I move up the tail. And I want that to fade so it just fades to nothing. So I'm using very light touch. See how I'm doing that? Overlapping. So I have my dark, medium, light value, and they all blend together. That's the key. And I'll be watching. How, how does that blend together? Dark, medium, light. You want to see all three values? That's shading with a pencil. Okay? So I'm going to do that on my second tail. I have my dark value moving into my medium value. A little bit less pressure. And then my light value. There we go. I got a nice shade of tail there. Now with the last feather, circular motion, medium value, and then into my light value. And I'm working right up over some of my spots. And Aubrey, you could, you're still working on your light value, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and get that light value in. And Isabel, very nice. Let's show you, let's show your work here, Isabel. Okay, so Isabel's already got it. She's got her dark, medium and she's working on her light value there very nice Isabel. okay all right now i'm going to take and shade some other parts of the brown area i'm going to work up the back of the bird and 
the shading is going to be a little more compact, okay? So you don't need a whole lot of um, movement here. Just move on up the back and it's just a little more compact than what we did with the tail feathers. So your dark value is right up against that line, then your median value and your light value is real close together. Moving up the back. Just make sure that you see all three values. That's probably the most common mistake I see when people use color pencils, is they don't get all the values in there. They'll miss a value. So that sometimes they'll do like the dark value and then miss the medium value and skip to the light. But we want all three in there. And that will look like it's truly shaded. Okay, moving up around the head. I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm going to stick to where my spots are, about right there. And then I'll stop. Okay? And then up over here there you go I'm gonna just end right there in this area the dark value is right up here and then medium and light okay now I'm gonna work now at the bottom of this wing area so I'm going back and forth getting my dark value in and then my circular motion medium value and light value Okay, and I'm just working across the bottom of the wing. I'm adding some shading. It's a little more compact than what we did on the tail feathers. There we go. Okay. Did you read what Pauline said? Not all artists. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and read what you said. Not all artists can teach. You can, Eric. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet, Pauline. Oh, okay. Well, it's so important for me to um, help you have success. That's my job. I'm your teacher. I'm an instructor. And my job is to help you have success with your art. And also, hopefully, open up doors. Maybe you'll learn something new and you can apply it to your own artwork. It's really fun to learn, isn't it? And to be creative. The time goes by so fast and we can forget about our problems. It's actual cheap therapy. It's wonderful. So, okay, I'm going to work around the eye. I'm going to do some shading around the eye. I'm just kind of filling in this area here. And darkest right up around the eye, though. And then I'm going to pull that color down towards the beak. Kind of lighten it up on the edges. Okay, I'm about ready to sharpen my pencil. You want to hand me the hand sharpener? Yeah, that one right it there. Work. It doesn't work? Oh, it's clogged. That's why. We'll have to fix that later. Okay, we'll use this one. Okay, I'm just going to sharpen the tip of my pencil so I can keep moving along. I have a little shading right under the chin here. If It's like if you were to continue your head right there, you're going to need to shade right under there. So darkest right up against the chin and then lighten up as you come down. Use less pressure. There you go. Okay, now we're working down into this white area here. There's a little shading. Just pull this line up a little bit right there. And we're going to put some shading right in that corner. So dark right here, and then medium value, and then light. There you go. Okay. And then all this area right here is shaded underneath the wing and the little patootie there. Cute patootie. So I'm going to use my darkest shading here. And then as I move across, I'm going to lighten up. This is going to be a long shaded area here. See how I'm lightening up as I go across? I'm going to pull some of that shading right underneath the wing. How's it going, Isabel? Good. You're doing so well. I love it. 
you know this video will be on for read broadcast so if you didn't catch it the first time or while we were live you can always join in later it will be rebroadcast on my Erica Joanne art page in Facebook sometimes if it goes really long sometimes they'll remove the video let's just cross our fingers they don't do that if even if they don't do it, I'm still going to add this video to YouTube. So it will be a free um, video on YouTube that you can access later also. So hopefully it will be in both places on Facebook and YouTube. All right, we got that area of the bird done. How do you feel about it? You feel accomplished? You should. Okay. Now let's work down, we're gonna work around the bird with the same color. So we're working in the sand. The first thing I want you to do though is let's get down in the corner of the sand. I'm gonna flip my bird over here and I'm working in the corners, okay? So I'm gonna use my darkest pressure right up in the corner and as I move out, I'm gonna cover that whole corner. This is the same type of shading, you're, you, but you're just, it's longer and bigger. So using circular motion, just make sure you overlap your strokes and you blend into the next value. So I'm using my light value now. See how that's going. So we got dark, medium, and a light value. Just pull that up into the sand and you want to do that on both corners both bottom corners of the piece i like to work kind of towards myself i feel like it's a little more comfortable that way so there we go okay, i'm going to work on this other corner here so i'm going to flip it around again working towards myself my darkest value right up in the corner and then moving towards myself, I'm lightening up the pressure. So I'm in my medium value now. And see, with the watercolor paper, you get this wonderful yummy texture. I love it. Yummy. You know, I forgot. Yeah, yummy. <laughs> Isabel's like, yummy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what artists say when they talk about color. <laughs> okay, so I'm in my medium value. I was gonna tell you, um, to start out on, you, this paper has kind of like um, a smoother texture and a more texturized texture. I always like to work on the texturized side. So I should have started you guys out that way. I forgot to tell you that. This is cold press, 140 weight. Cold press has more texture in the paper. <laughs> yes, you need to sharpen your pencils, <laughs> Lisa. Hi there. Hi, Billy. Glad you guys are here. If you have any questions, just shoot them out. We keep looking over to see what's going on. All right, so I'm going to pull this out. Even over here, I want my light value over in this area, too. So I want it to just fan out and fade like so. Okay, I wish we had like, you know, the double camera thing going on where I could flip and show you guys kind of a panorama of all of us working. But like I said, maybe in the future, <laughs> things will get better that way. All right, let me, let me show yours. This is Aubrey's. She has a little lighter touch. See how I go like, oh, you know, and that's okay. That's totally okay. That's her personality. And it, the biggest thing is you make sure you want it to fade into the background and she's got that going on. The only thing I see right here, Aubrey, is just right in that area. You could probably add a little more color okay. and make that blend right in. Okay, very nice. Isabel has been taking drawing lessons 
from a, a really lovely lady named Carolyn, and she's been having fun with that. Do you still take drawing lessons from her? Mm -hmm. Do you go once a week? Mm -hmm. You go once a week? Yep. Oh, that's so wonderful. Here, Isabel, it's going on. This is beautiful, Isabel. You've got mm. lots of grad, gradual shading. I love that. So, very nice. Yeah, she's okay. learning. Um, you're doing color pencil, right, with Carolyn? Uh -huh. Awesome. So, she's getting this at a young age. Don't we all wish we had this more as, as youngsters? Wow. Okay, now let's go ahead. Now this part, our bird is going to disappear a little bit because we're going to be shading right up against the edge, but we're going to deepen that shading later, so don't worry, we'll get it back. This is the ugly stage. So we're going to work um, underneath and around the bird, and I'm going right up against the chin there, and I want it to be nice and dark in that area, and then blend out fade out as I'm moving away. I need to sharpen my pencil, I can tell. So time to sharpen. Do you need to sharpen? There's a better sharpener, there you go. Okay, so back down, going underneath the chest area. I'm shading. I'm super excited to be able to share um, art with all of you in this way. Aren't we so blessed to live in a day and age that we can communicate with each other and we live so far away? This is amazing to me. That, you know, when I was in high school, I would have never thought we could do this. Now, Isabel, you probably just, this is all you know, right? <laughs> All you know is computers and the internet. You grew up with it, but we didn't grow up with this. I was telling my daughter the other day, yeah, I had to go to the library and figure that out. There's a lot of things we had to figure out either on our own, um, at the library, talking to friends, taking classes. We didn't have things so accessible to us information we are in the information age that's for sure but i love how we can connect with each other even though we live miles apart um i can paint with you and i love that i hope you're having fun okay i'm gonna flip you know how i told you i like to go towards myself i'm gonna flip it over and work towards myself i'm gonna do a little bit of shading let's see in this area, right above the beak. And this is another kind of fan out shading. It's dark shading up against the, the beak and the head. And I'm fanning out. And I'm staying on the sand. There we go. See, like I said, the bird's gonna kinda um, there's not a lot, there's some contrast going on, but we're, we don't have the full extent of the contrast yet. We're just working on the sand with, we're using the Sienna Brown pencil. And I'm slightly going down the back of the bird. Darkest value right up against the bird. And then I'm pulling the color towards myself. Okay, you're welcome, Anna. <laughs> I should have said it earlier about the paper. She says, thanks for the tip about the paper. Yes, cold press, it's, you know, processed so that you have texture. Hot press is smooth, smooth paper. I love to work on watercolor paper. I love the texture. See all that? That's like graining. I love it. 
I try to teach my students not to be afraid of it. Embrace it. <laughs> okay, make sure you get underneath the bird and then kind of all around. We have a little bit less shading up here by the head and down a little bit, but I don't have any shading going off of the tail. Pretty much got enough shading here in the corners. So now Isabel's grabbed an eraser and she's erasing a little bit and that's totally great. That's good because sometimes you might dark. find that you've gotten it too dark. Yes, and the eraser is great for picking up some of that color off your paper and lightening up a little bit. That's a wonderful thing about color pencil. Very nice. I want you to come the eraser. This is what she's you can do. You can actually blend into your you can use your eraser as a blender. So like if you feel like you went out too far, let's say I didn't like that and I wanted to lighten that up, I can move it in more. So that's so great. I love color pencils. That's great. Okay. Now we're we're done with our Santa Brown. We want to take our dark brown pencil now and we're going to go back into those shaded areas and deepen the shading. So make sure you have a nice sharp pencil. You need a dark brown pencil. And I'm going to first work on the bird. So I'm going to go back and repeat some of the areas that I've already worked on. Now you don't have to shade over um, everything completely. You can kind of go up and then stop a little earlier. So I'm reinforcing the shaded area here, but I'm not going to take it all the way up to where I shaded all the way here. I'm just working on the tip there. But I still use the same principle of the three different values, dark, medium, and light. Dark, medium, and light. So you don't need to, like I said, you don't need to um, repeat every, you know, the whole area that you shaded, just that end portion. And we're going to move back up into the shaded areas and just reinforce. This is a quick step. You don't have to do a lot. You're just reinforcing those areas and deepening the shading. Moving up the back and deepening those areas. I'm going to put a little extra shading right here on the neck, the top of the neck. Make that darker there. And then right in this corner here, and deepen that shading there. Hi, Billy. You say that you purchased the pattern. Yes, now you have a video that you can watch, right? It will be rebroadcast and for sure on YouTube and then hopefully Facebook will keep it on. Um, you did Hootie and Friend. Okay, you did, um, you probably did the Hoot Nanny. That's a fun one. I love Hoot Nanny. Okay, so I worked on the, you know, kind of the feathered area. I'm going to work around the eye a little bit. I'm going to deepen the shading here and just add a little line between the eye and the beak. I don't know if you see that. Just a little line there. It looks almost like a, like a triangle off of the eye. And then a little bit around the eye. Not too much. Okay, I think I got the feathers all done. Now I'm going to deepen the shading in the background. I tend to use a heavy hand, and um, that's just my style. And it's okay if you have a light hand, that's, that's your style. You'll notice that if you are a painter, you'll paint with a lot of contrast, and you'll do the same with your pencils. Kind of funny how you do that. 
whether you have a paintbrush in your hand or a pencil in your hand, you tend to use the same um, style of putting color down. Either dark, a dark painter, you know, heavy hand or a light one. Okay, working it, just deepening the shading right here. And then up in the sand a little bit. I'm not going to do a, a ton of that though. Okay, how's it going? Isabel, Isabel has an activity tonight that she's going to go off to. So we only have her for a little while, but um, hopefully we'll get most of it done. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I really like what's going on there. I'm going to move on to my black pencil and we're going to add some uh, shading with our black pencil and refine everything so it comes together. We going okay? Yep. Yeah. How you doing? Okay, let's let's show let's just show and tell. Here's Aubrey's piece. Okay, she's got her shading on going on here. Right in here. You could probably Ooh. you could probably blend get more of your lighter value in here. You could even take your eraser and just kind of soften that area right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got our black pencil. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my eye. Now my eye is transferred wrong there. <laughs> so it really should start out with a circle. It should be in the middle and it should have a little white ring around it. Okay, so don't go all the way into your white ring. Okay, so there's your eye. And then take it off, a little line off of the eye like so. Okay, so start out with a circle. Keep the white ring around it. And we'll add the highlights later with paint. So you're doing my innovative pencil technique right now. We use both paint and color pencils together. And I use the Josonia gouache paint. Um, and then I also use Prismacolor pencils, which are a wax-based pencil. Okay, all right, now let's work on the beak. I'm gonna work on the base of the beak and really refine it and define it. Mm -hmm. And just like when you were using the paint, you don't wanna go out too far uh, and grow your beak. You wanna keep your beak nice and small. I'm going to work on the bottom. I worked on the base, and now I'm putting some shading down the bottom of the beak and working away from that shading or from that line. There we go. Okay, so that helps refine it. And then I'm going to Pull my color down here. I'm kind of relining that area to refine it and then add some shading right in there. So I'm reinforcing the shading right there, deepening it. And then I'm going to only bring the line down a little bit, about to the middle of the chest. I'm going to stop right there. And then I'll pick it up very lightly, down a little bit more and then bring that line to meet the leg. And then right there in that corner, define that area with some dark shading. Okay. All right, you guys, um, if, you could, if you like this video, if you're having fun with it, give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. Or even a heart, I love a heart, I love hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you can. All right, now let's work on the legs. We're gonna do the same thing with our legs, just like we did our beak. So we're shading right underneath the body. That's the darkest area. And then it lightens up as you move down the leg. I um, share innovative ways to paint and create. That's kind of my tagline. And um, it's really important to me that you have success. 
I do step-by-step -step artwork and my instructions are laid out that way in my pattern packets and I want to make it simple and easy for you to follow along and enjoy working on art. Okay, I'm lining underneath. See how I define that? That looks so nice when it gets defined. It's starting to make take shape and stand out from the background. It's giving me some contrast. I'm shading right up against that line and making it so the bird looks like there's some space between the bird and the sand. Okay, how's it coming along? Okay, yeah, I, you know, Betty, I would love to do more and I hope to do more with you. I hope to do projects like this that aren't too involved. They're fun and easy. And then I have a group of certified teachers that can take you farther with more advanced work. Um, I do teach at some conventions, some painting conventions, and I do seminars in different areas around the country. Um, but I have some great teachers that know this method and can t make it more advanced for you and you can have more one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. And they're based in different areas of the country. Right now I have a few that are um, on the West Coast. So we've got Washington, Oregon, and California covered. And we have Colorado covered. And then we have some people working on their certification um, in the Midwest and out on the East Coast. So hopefully we'll see more of these ladies as we move along. But I do hope to do more Facebook lives with you. I love connecting with people. You know, um, I work in my little creative cave <laughs> and I don't get much interaction. So it's kind of nice to be able to um, share my work with you um, and have a way to do that and connect with people. I'm all about teaching, teaching art to people. So um, this is just a wonderful, great way to do it. Hi, Aunt Inger. Oh, you know, oh, we have a sister. My sister is watching, and this is um, Isabel's niece. Say bye to everyone, Isabel. Bye, everybody. I'm leaving. <laughs> you can take this with me. Yes, you can take it with you and finish it at home, okay? Okay. We'll see you later, Isabel. Okay. Isabel had to go. She's taken off to a church activity. So I'm so glad she could join us today, though. You can see it's really fun to do this, even with youngsters, give them a chance to be creative. It just makes me so sad when I hear about children that um, could use art in their lives and they don't have that available to them. And, um, you know, especially if they're more of a tactile type of child that enjoys hands-on and learns best with hands-on, they need to have that type of success in their life. Um, if they're not doing so well academically, this is a great way for them to feel good about who they are and the talents that they have and possess. And they might just learn a little bit more about themselves. They learn about um, how they learn best. I learned through my art that I learned best by hands-on and I'm a visual person. So it's really important for me to have someone show me how to do something rather than just lecture. Carly says, looking forward to painting with you at the end of the month in Las Vegas. Oh, wonderful, yes. Thank you. Thanks for taking my class. I'll be teaching Brawly Bright Bouquet. <laughs> it's a fun one with a squirrel. <laughs> it's a little more advanced uh, piece. Um, Actually, not really advanced. I guess when I'm thinking advanced, I'm thinking of a lot of people doing this live video as beginners. But um, that piece, actually, beginners can do it with me. I do my best to explain. So, but that's a painted piece. There won't be any colored pencils with that one. 
It's all paint and it will be lots of fun. So how are you guys doing? You got your black on? All right, I think I need to add a little more black around my eye here. There, okay. So I'm done with my black, done with my brown. Let's see, where am I going next? I got the sand done. Oh, we're on to our blue. Woohoo! I love blue. Okay, we have this water area that we need to do some shading. And I wanted to do this a little different. So I'm going to show you in the picture here. We have five different areas of shading. And you can just um, randomly put these in. We'll start out in the corner. We're using this Mediterranean blue color. And I'm working towards myself. And I'm going to just go about an inch across and bring that color down. So I'm adding my dark value, moving into my medium. And I'm just bringing the color down. It's like a stripe of color. Okay. So it fans out a little bit right in this area here, but I'm bringing it down vertically into the ocean. So that's my first section of shading, like so. And then we'll work on the other corner, and this will be our second section of shading. I'm bringing it out about an inch too. My darkest color is right up against the edge of that watercolor paper. And then I'm lightening up the pressure as I come down using a circular motion and then letting that just fade right into the background color. So those are my two stripes. Now I need to add three more in here. And each one is about an inch wide or so. You can vary the size a little bit because, you know, nature, nothing looks perfect, right? It's all um, different sizes and shapes. So we don't want it to be too, um, too perfect, I guess is what I'm saying. There's my third. Here's my fourth area. Bringing it down. You know, I'm getting ready for the Las Vegas convention right now and it's a little crazy when an artist needs to get ready for something. There's so many things to think about, lots of moving parts and details. <clears throat> and you try not to forget anything. We had to start placing lots of orders and making sure we have product available. I'll have a three, um, what is it called? Three wide booths. <laughs> I'll have three booths on the tray floor at the Las Vegas convention. So if you're there, stop by and say hi, please. We'd love to see you. Aubrey will be there. And my cert some of my certified teachers will be there. Kathy Baldwin, one of my certified teachers, will be teaching and make it take it. And we'll be having lots of fun. So see how we got the reflection going on. I've got the five areas, super fun. Well, that was fun to have Isabel here today. I'm really glad that she was able to join us. She didn't get the blue area done, but she can do that later. Okay. Thank you, Norma Jean and Christine and Anna. Thank you so much. And Pauline. Yes, good luck in Vegas. Oh, just pray that everything comes together. And we're always a little nervous about, we drive our trailer down there, and we're always a little nervous about the weather and going over passes. We have to go over two passes to get down to Las Vegas. So that can be interesting. I want to show you Aubrey's. Look, look at her beautiful ocean and the, the um, salt effects there. Isn't that pretty? Very nice, Aubs. Okay, let's see. I think we're about done with our shading. Yep, we are. Okay, we can put our pencils aside. And we want to uh, grab some of our paint again. And we need a liner brush and like a small round. 
would be good. Okay, the first thing you want to do is just go in with your burnt umber color. I'm going to show it to you here. Just use this burnt umber here. And you can use flow medium or water to thin this down. I don't want it to be um, too thin, but I want it to be thin enough that it flows okay. I'm just touching up my eye. If there's any, um, any touch up I need to do there, that's what I'm doing right here with the burnt umber. I'm making my eye a little rounder. There we go. Okay. Okay, now this is kind of a fun part. We're going to use warm white and we're going to add the white spots to the back of the bird. Here's warm white for you, Aubrey. Thank you. Okay. Okay, same thing. I'm just adding a little water. And I'm going to randomly place these spot, spots in. I just kind of sit it down. See how I sit down the brush? And these are just random. They're kind of following the back of the, kind of the direction of the back of the um, feathers on the bird. So I want a little more pigment in this. So I don't really want it watered down a lot. It's okay if there's ridges in this paint. You want it to be able to um, stand up. You might have to go back and touch up so it's nice and opaque. That's what I'm looking for is some opaqueness. And these are random and various, very, how do I want to say that? In various sizes, okay? So you can have some spots going on, like little, just little dots like that. And then you can take some and just sit them down. And you're just randomly going over the area. Some things, some of these white spots will overlap your dark spots a little bit. Have fun with it. I'm going to bring some up here on the head too. The random, more random the better, okay? It needs to look natural. And like I said, I might have to go back over some of my spots and make them nice and opaque. As they dry, they might um, be somewhat see-through. Okay. I'm even bringing some down in this area to the chest. Like I said before, I use, I call it my innovative pencil method. I use paint and color pencils together to create my artwork. I also do just acrylic pieces, but I love the combination of both, the colored pencils and paint. Gives me the best of both worlds. And I started out with acrylics many years ago when my children were small. And I spent my um, extra time, haha, <laughs> not a lot of extra time, but I fit it in here and there. And it made me uh, a little more happier. <laughs> you know, it's tough being a mom. And sometimes you just need a little outlet because you're surrounded by laundry and cleaning and little kids and um, schoolwork and lots of stress. It's nice to have a hobby. And that was what I did. I spent my time painting and it made me feel good about life. I love my life anyway. I love my children. But you know, we all need something to kind of divert our attention sometimes. My friend says she started be, she started painting when her kids became teenagers. <laughs> it was her way of not worrying so much about her children all the time. 
kind of escape the world for a few hours. Okay. And like I said, some of these spots can be bigger and, you know, they're just different sizes and shapes. Just have fun with it. But you do want to vary the sizes. So, you know, make sure your shapes are not all the same. They need to be different. That's how nature is. Okay. And then add a few spots here and there on the chest. Make sure and grab the opportunity to do that. Okay. Very fun and nice. You can add, um, maybe, you could thicken up some of your spots. You wanna use my brush, Aubrey? Okay. She's got some of her spots going on like this. And so I'm just gonna recommend that she goes in and just thickens up a few of them, makes make them a little more round instead of all um, kind of oblong. Add a few round spots and that will really make that a little more natural. Okay. Sorry <laughs> for my reach. Okay, I'm gonna grab my warm white and a liner brush. I have a script liner right now, but you can just use a regular smaller liner brush. Oops. I had a little too much water on that. And I'm gonna line, I'm gonna define this area right here around the eye. So you just wanna make sure that your brush um, has paint evenly loaded on it. Then you won't get blobs. So when you're loading your brush, just really work it on your palette and get it loaded nice, like so. And then I just touch the tip a little bit to the paint. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add a little highlight dot. Right, it's really tiny, just a little highlight dot there. And then I'm gonna pull a stroke down the beak and I'll show you how to do that. You load your brush just like you're lining with it. And I'll use a little more pressure in the larger area of the stroke. And then as I move the stroke down, I'm gonna pull up on my brush. So I'm pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, make it thinner. There we go, so it's thicker right here in this area, and then gets thinner as I go down the beak, like so. That's my little highlight stroke on my beak. Same color, warm white, just use a liner brush. All right, and my eye, he looks a little tired, and you know why? It's because the white is um, going across this area of the eye. So to brighten up the eye a little more, I could go back in with some black paint. I'll show you that trick. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I'm actually using the dark umber. Okay, so I'm gonna brighten up his eye. He looks kinda tired. So all I need to do is make this area a little higher. See how that brightened his eye up? <laughs> it's like, okay, I woke up today. Now I'm ready for the day. So I'm gonna brighten him up down here too. I've got a little touch there I need to fix. There we go. Okay, so he's happier. <laughs> he's not so tired. Well, we are very close to being done. Guys, I hope you're having fun. We're almost done. All right, the next thing we need to do is the splattering. Now, you have a choice here. You can put a barrier coat over your piece 
before you splatter. And then if you splatter and you don't like what you've done, then you can easily remove it. Or you can, uh, you can test it and, and um, go forward without the barrier coat. I think I'll put a barrier coat on mine because I want to be able to pull up any splatter without taking away my pencil work because that's what will happen. I usually clean up my splatter with a cotton swab, a damp cotton swab, and the water in the cotton swab will just pull your color pencil right up. So we're going to use a barrier coat. I, um, I recommend that you either use um, a Prismacolor fixative or any fixative that you might have. There's Krylon and some other various brands. You just want to make sure your piece is nice and dry, and then you can spray it with a few coats, and then you can move forward with the rest of the painting steps. But um, since I'm inside here with you guys, I'm not going to do the fixative spray. I'm going to use this fast drying glaze medium as my barrier coat, which also works. I just have, there's a few little rules about this to make sure it doesn't smear your pencil work and I'll tell you what those are. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit, put on my palette. I just need a few, a little puddle, like a quarter size puddle. And I'm using a three quarter inch wash. So I want to make sure my brush is nice and dry, there's no water in it. That's an um, element that will smear your pencil too. We talked about water and the cotton swab. Well, if you have water in your brush, it will also smear your pencil. We don't want that to happen. So no water in your brush, just nice and dry. Go ahead and load your brush with this fast dry glazing medium. Um, you can also use glazing meat, the regular glazing medium, but that one tends to smear a little more. So you want to be very, very careful and thoughtful about that if you do use that. I would test it on another piece of paper before you use it on your piece. Now, as you can see, I'm going to just lay the glazing medium down and not go back over it. See how I just lay it down, a coat like that. And I'm just very carefully and gently taking it across my piece. And I'm not having any smearing because I'm being very careful that way. And there's no water in my brush. Okay, see how that's going? This is my barrier coat so that I can splatter. And if I have any mistakes, I can pull them up later. This is making my piece, it's like permanizing what I've done. It's setting my work. You can, like I said, you can do this with a Krylon or um, Prismacolor fixative. But since I'm here and I'm working with you, I'm inside, I'm not using a, a spray fixative. I'm just gonna use my glazing medium. And this is, like I said before, this is the fast dry Josonia glazing medium. Great stuff. Works great. So. What are the fuel rules for using glazing medium? No water. Very gently lay the glazing medium down over your piece. Now we're gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'll just talk to you. So, <laughs> yes, Kathy, hi Kathy. I, she says, yep, I'm not sure what you meant by yep. <laughs> oh, and Libby, aren't you from Australia? It's great to, to see you here. Hugs and kisses to you, too. How's Australia these days? Is it's it, very hot down there. Is it hot? We're in the midst of snowstorms and all kinds of crazy weather across our country. Some really cold, cold winter snaps going on over in the east side of the country. It's been crazy. Oh, that looks beautiful. Can I show everyone your piece, Aubrey? Sure. Lovely. Look what Aubrey's done. She just put her fast dry glazing medium on. So we're gonna let that dry. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to live in Puerto Rico and 
I, I remember it as clear as day, but I was only like, oh, ages three to five years old. It's funny how your memories are so clear when you're little. And we lived right on the coast. We lived in an area called Rosie Roads, or Roosevelt Roads, on base in Puerto Rico. And when I was a little girl, I used to go down to the water's edge. We lived right on, like, right on the coast, and there was um, a little cliff, and we'd go down the cliff right down to the ocean. It was just amazing. And you know, it's funny, because all my growing up, I've always lived kind of close to the ocean. And now that I live in Washington State, the ocean's a little different here. You can't just go swimming in it like you do in Southern California or Puerto Rico. Um, the, wa the water is much colder here. But it's lovely to look at, and we have some pretty scenery around here. Mountains, beautiful snowy mountains, trees, evergreen trees. Okay, it's almost dry. We're getting there. So what's your favorite thing about colored pencil? Why don't you go ahead and comment below your favorite thing about colored pencil. And I'm talking about the Prismacolor Wax Base, the one that you're using today. What's your favorite thing? I'll tell you what my favorite thing is, is that it erases. It might not erase totally cleanly on every project. It kind of depends on the surface you're working on. but you do have some freedom to go in and erase some of your work if you need to, which is so wonderful. Okay, we're getting close. You know, I'm hoping, I'm kind of, let me know what you think about this too. I'm thinking about um, starting a Facebook page called Paint and Create with Erica Joanne. And it'll be a place where you can post your work that you've done. Um, like, like today, it would be a great time to post your um, little bird, your little primitive bird on um, the Facebook page later on. So let me know what you think. Do you think that would be a good thing to do? And would you support it? <laughs> um, I'm kind of thinking, because we'd like to do a few more, you know, we'd like to do these videos more on a regular basis. And it would be nice to be able to connect that way in a Facebook page. So let's see. Okay, we got some answers. Billy, she says lots of colors, great medium for traveling. Oh, that is so true. Color pencils are so wonderful for traveling with. You can stay creative and have fun, uh, have that outlet of art while you're traveling. Um, and maybe there's something you want to draw when you're out and about, you know, something that you just really want, you know, love to paint. And Pauline says, I find pencils more relaxing to work with. Yes. Well, what's nice about it, like, like this area where I shaded with a pencil, that would be really hard to duplicate with a brush. You know, we have some excellent artists out there that could do that. You could probably take your brush edge and just kind of pull it across like that, but that would be really hard to duplicate. So yeah, pencils are much more versatile and it makes it a little more relaxing because of that versatility. All right, so I think I'm ready to go ahead and splatter. We're about, about done with our two hours here, so I'm gonna hurry up and splatter and um, tell you a few more things about this piece. We got some, we um, just yesterday, our woodcutter brought over some wood pieces. Yes, and um, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this piece once I get it all splattered and done. Okay, I'm gonna take my, um, I got this, this brush online is a splatter brush that we offer but you can just go ahead and use an old toothbrush you just want to make sure it has a nice flat edge to it um, the, the toothbrushes that have the round curvy stuff that's really hard to get a good splatter with those a nice flat edge stiff brush you can stiffen your toothbrush with um, with like varnish or something just let it sit and varnish you know put some varnish in it and let it dry overnight um, make it nice and stiff and let's see here. The color we're going to use is that blue, that colony blue. I'm going to start with that. 
And then we'll also use some of the skin tone base to do some splattering with. And I know I, I, did, I um, demonstrated this recently on a video that we did for Christmas time, but I'll go ahead and do it again. This is, this is kind of a, a fun thing, a fun way to do your splatter without making such a mess. And I know that people sometimes are concerned about that, like where is all that splatter gonna go? I'm worried about it. So a lot of people will just skip the splatter and stuff because they don't want to make a big mess. Um, I'm all into messes. No, I'm into controlled messes actually. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my brush and dip it in the water there, tap it, and then I'll add my paint to it. So there's my colony blue. I'm just twirling around and I'm gonna pull my thumb up against the brush. You could use gloves if you wanted to use gloves. You could use gloves. Um, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna, wherever I face that brush is where that splatter is gonna go. So when I pull it up, and if I'm going this way, the splatter is gonna go that way. So really, when you think about it logically, you wanna just face down. Then your splatter will go right down onto your piece. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna test my splatter on this piece first. See how that is. I think I want um, bigger splatter. That's a little fine for me. So I'm gonna add a little more water. So the more water in your paint, the bigger the splatter. Okay, that's getting a little bigger. I think a little, I want a little more than that. So I'm adding more water. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, that's more like it. So I'm gonna take my piece. Um, I do want to be careful with my bird, so I'm gonna just take a little piece of paper and hold it over my bird while I'm splattering so I don't get any excess splatter on my bird. And I'll just face my brush down like so. <clears throat> And I want larger splatter, so I put more um, water in my brush. Okay, I did get a little bit on my bird, but that's okay. I've got that barrier coat, right? So I'm going to take a Q-tip or cotton swab, and it's a little bit damp, and I'm going to take remove some of the splatter that I don't want carefully. I didn't want that splatter on the eye and up on the forehead. I don't really care for that. Okay, so I think I'm okay with everything else. Although I like the large splatter, I think I'm going to remove these. They're a little too big for me. Okay, I like it. Now we'll use the same brush and a different color. We'll use the skin tone base to do a little more splattering and that will go up into the ocean area. Very nice, Aubrey. Good job. So you can see that it's a little more controlled and the way, the method of splattering, a little more controlled. We gotta take this brush out of here. You ruin your brushes when you leave them on the water. Okay. <laughs> I think it was me. I was probably the one that put the brush in there. Okay, I'm just rinsing out my brush, getting the blue out of there. Okay, we'll start again. So we're using this color. This is Skin Tone Base. And I'm going to test again. And I could use a little more water. Okay, all right, here we go again. A little more splatter. Okay, we're gonna try and control this. A little bit up in my ocean. That's really all I wanted, was just a little bit up there, so. All done with that part. Now I'm gonna wash out my thumb. <laughs> 
What's great about the Josonia Artist Colors is because they are more of a, they're a um, acrylic gouache and they have watercolor properties, the paint comes off so much easier, guys. Oh my word, it comes out of your brushes, it comes out of your clothes so much better. I'm gonna grab my paper towel, wipe off my hands. Okay. All right, we're very close to getting done. So the, we're done with all the painting area. All this painting is done. And this piece is just about ready to sign. At this point, once it's all dry, you can varnish it. You can put varnish right over it. You put the barrier coat over your color pencils so the color pencils won't smear. Varnish does smear color pencils. And we don't like that. So um, you want to make sure to have a barrier coat before you put varnish on your piece. So the fun thing I wanted to show you guys was we just got these in yesterday. My woodcutter just cut these for us. He does a fantastic job with our wood. He planes it down and sands it really well. And he also takes and covers any, if there's any little divots or um, imperfections in the wood, he will take and cover that with wood filler and make it nice. So what I wanna do is I wanna mount this piece to this wood block. Wouldn't that be cool? And that way I can have the option to hang it on my wall or I can set it on a mantle, like a companion piece to like a beach scene. Um, I just really love the idea of these wood blocks. So I'm gonna be doing more of these, you guys. you see more of this in the future. Um, I have a special glue, it's called Line Co. Line Co Neutral pH Adhesive. And this is what I use for mounting my pieces. And um, I'm not gonna do it right now. We're about done with our video, so I won't be doing this right now, but I'll tell you how to do it. How about that? So what you do is you put your adhesive down on your piece. I need that. Yes, and I also need the credit card and the, and the sander. Sorry, don't have all this stuff right in front of me. So I just, you know, those, um, credit cards you get in the mail, <laughs> the little fake credit cards. So I'm gonna use that. I put my glue down on the piece, right? And then I, I spread it evenly across my wood like so. Once I get it all evenly spread, then I take my, my watercolor paper and put it right over. And if it's nice and dry, <laughs> then you can take your brayer. This is a brayer. It's just kind of a hard rubber. Um, rolling thing and you push it right over your piece and the glue should kind of start coming out seeping out the edges you want to push the glue out the edges like so once you get that all done then you can kind of clean up the edges with a q-tip you get all the excess glue off and then put like a large book something heavy over your piece that covers the whole piece and let it sit overnight and then in the morning, it'll be nice and glued down, and it should be evenly glued down. You wanna make sure that your glue went all the way to the edges, all the way, so that it's nice and glued down. And then in the morning, you can take a sanding block, like so, and then just um, hit the edges, make sure that you don't have any overlapping area on your watercolor paper, and you can just sand that right off with a sanding block. So what's so cool about that is once you get that all adhered, then you can paint the edges of your block. Make sure and paint the back too, because if you don't paint the back, your block could become warped. You always want to paint the black back of all your pieces, guys, because it could warp if you don't have paint on the whole thing. Um, and then just so fun. It would be a great companion piece for display or just putting on your wall. So it gives you lots of options. These are actually on our website right now. If you go and look in Seashore Prim, um, it's listed as one of the uh, options that you can add to your cart. It's called a wood art block and it's $3.55 for this wood art block. I also sell the um, 
adhesive there for six dollars so i hope you had fun you guys let's see let's see any comments i need to check in with um yeah stiffening your toothbrush with varnish that works well yep expired credit cards they work good too so i just use the ones i get in the mail all right well it was so fun painting with you i hope you enjoyed our time together and I hope to see you again soon. Here's Aubrey's finished piece. Didn't she do a beautiful job? We had so much fun. All right. Make wonderful art memories together with your friends and family. And this video will hopefully be up for a while. We, we will have it on YouTube for sure. So check us out though. We're at um, ericajoanne.com and you can come visit us and um, I'm there, my email, you can check me out and then um, email me any questions you might have. I'm here to help you. So talk to you later. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye, guys.